Hello again from Art Market Gallery in Tel Aviv, the headquarters of Bruno Art Group in Israel. I hope that you all had a nice uh, holiday, Passover or Easter with your close family in these challenging times. And as we said, we'll continue with our short, short lectures and introduction of artists. Uh, today we'll introduce to you Uri Dushi, one of our artists that follows the idea of pop art. Uh, but before we we'll go to his studio, we'll uh, say a few words about pop art in general. So when I start preparing this lecture, I, this lecture, I ask myself uh, where, where from this uh, name pop art came, who initiated it. We all know that pop means popular, comes from popular, but I never uh, really thought uh, who was the first who, who, who used this term. And the reason that I didn't know it is because there is no clear answer, but just a few assumptions. One of them is, the, is um, uh, about a group of artists uh, that in 1952 initiated the group that was called Independent Group. It was founded in London and uh, the members were artists, painters, sculptors, architects, writers. And they were challenging the uh, traditional art and had discussion about how modern art should, should look. Uh, should, should be seen. And to those of you who followed our previous act uh, lectures, I'm sure it rings a bell because similar in 1916 we discussed about Dada movement, again group of artists from few uh, areas that were discussing the modern art. So one assumption is that among their uh, uh, meetings and talks the term pop art appeared already there. Another assumption is also from uh, England, a British art critic, curator, uh, Lawrence Alloway, Allo uh, wrote an essay in 1958 where he uh, used the phrase pop art, although even he says that it was not exactly pop art, but he used the word popular pop culture and uh, popular mass culture. One thing is for sure, the term pop art uh, appeared in 1962 in uh, the occasion of a symposium on pop art that was held in the MoMA, in the Museum of Modern Art in New York. Modern art in New York. So one thing is for sure that in 1962 uh, the term pop art uh, uh, appeared to the world. So what is pop art about? Pop art is an art movement that started in the 1950s, mid-50s and 60s, both in the UK and the USA. We remember that those days the internet was not there yet, so communication was very little. So it's assumed to, uh, we assume to think that both a movement in the UK and the USA uh, started in parallel without knowing one of each other. The ideas, what, but the ideas were the same, to challenge the tradition of art, uh, to use uh, uh, imaginary from culture, from daily, from daily use and from, 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 from the culture in art, um, opposed to elitistic art, to bring art to, to the mass, to the people. And again, by using and emphasizing what was considered to be banal and kitsch in an aesthetic way, so as much as people would be able to like it, to search for meaning in a day, on daily, on, to search meaning in a daily, in, on the daily activities, on the daily products, and not only uh, uh, in a very, what we call then elitistic, uh, elitistic art. Um, as I said before, the Dadaists already in 1916 were challenging the, the traditional art, but what's interesting, so definitely Dada was, was the ground for the pop art movement, but as, ma uh, as long as the Dadaists were looking to destroy, to, to change by destroying the, the, the art and, and, uh, and the, the works were not aesthetic, the pop art uh, artists tried to, uh, to have aesthetic, bright, bright, using bright colors, nice, uh, uh, ideas uh, in their art. Um, as we said, UK and USA, 
most famous artists in the UK are uh, Richard Hamilton and David Hockney. The most famous artists in the USA are Andy Warhol and Roy Lichtenstein. And if you will look on the images behind me, we can see that the British uh, used more the daily life. Richard Hamilton painted his living room. David Hockney painted his terrace and, and, uh, and the woman uh, in a swimming pool, while the Americans uh, used more icons, uh, consumer products, of course, uh, Marilyn Monroe and the Campbell Soup by Warhol, and Roy Lichtenstein uses cartoons in his, in his works. In the 1980s, kind of a new uh, movement arise. Uh, it's called Neo Pop Art, which most artists that works in this uh, area use those ideas. They, they, those are artists that looked at pop art artists, used their ideas, moved them a little bit to our, our nowadays uh, items. Um, very famous are Jeff Koons and Keith Haring. Jeff Koons with his uh, unique sculptures of, of his animals and uh, Keith Haring using graffiti and cartoons in his art. Uh, we represent few uh, pop artists. Uh, here we have Sean Paul Florence from the USA. Uh, the ones who knows our gallery abroad knows that we represent uh, David Gerstein, Dudu Gerstein, Israeli famous artist and one of the most famous artists uh, in the USA, Charles Fazzino and Romero Brito. And of course Uri Dushi, uh, which uh, uses both graffiti, street art, and images from cartoons, and of course uh, Marilyn Monroe. So we are going to leave the gallery now and travel to uh, Uri Dushi's studio. So we'll see you in a, in a second. Thank you. Fine, actually, we live in a place where it's uh, not so difficult not to feel what's going on, which is good. So, it will, uh, I'm walking all the time in my studio, so when you not see the news, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, we found out that our artists don't really <laughs> realize that yes, there's yes. a... Yes, since, since work is at home, so staying at home, yes. it's okay. <laughs> You're, you're regular to be quarantined in your industry. Yes, yes. Well, tell us uh, how it all started. Uh, start even where you were you born, what, uh, how did you reach art? Actually, you when, if you ask me this question at my teenage, uh, I was, you want to be a musician. I started as a musician. I would like, on those days, I was hoping to be a professional musician, which I started as one. Uh, but uh, during these days, uh, I developed my first love to painting, painting and taking photographs, uh, use my camera. And uh, from there, things just start to flow very good for me. It was a place where I feel better to create uh, while painting, while taking photographs. So, uh, make collages, uh, photo collages, feel very free there. And it develops from there. Uh, so, was there a certain point in time that you realized that, okay, I'm a professional artist, I'm going to make my living, or, or it was a process? Do you remember? Can I started to sell painting before making money with music, so I understand this is a place that I can communicate with people much easier. People react uh, very good to my painting, my first painting, my first collages, and I feel uh, free there. 
it came very easy uh, and it developed through the years. I continue to paint, uh, the painting uh, develops to sculptures, three-dimensional sculptures. I made a lot of uh, public art uh, projects, uh, put uh, sculptures in uh, public places. I have many cities in Israel have my works. And uh, then also developed uh, three-dimensional metal sculptures which is also evolved till these days, uh, use uh, painting of a metal in different technique. And um, that's it for now. And uh, it's quite obvious, but also let us know what's, what influenced you, which artist. Uh, uh, at, the at the beginning uh, I was very uh, impressed by the uh, surrealist movement, uh, Salvador Dali, René Magritte. And then in the 70s I saw a very big uh, art exhibition in the Tel Aviv uh, Museum of pop art. They bring all the major pop artists, uh, Andy Wall, uh, Roy Lichtenstein, uh, which have a, a very big impact on me, because I love the way they took uh, uh, the common symbols that we use to see on a day-to-day -day basis and put it on their work. Uh, and uh, from there I more and more use those uh, items in my works. Uh, of course it involves because today I'm also using uh, images uh, that we used to know since our childhood. Uh, in try to feel the first love, the naive first love of things uh, which is pure in my eyes. Uh, it's all come together to create works that make us feel good, even give us a little smile. This is what I'm looking for now. Good, okay, so I suggest that uh, we go, now go to your studio and see yes. how, it, uh, how you create all things. Okay. So let's go. So we are now in the studio. Uri, uh, tell us a little bit about the process of creating your artworks, please. Okay. The process starts on the computer. When I make the first composition of the art, uh, then the output will be, the first output will be to print it on metal or wood or paper. And then I create the final assembly of the composition. The next stage will be painting, which is very important. Several techniques of painting over the wood or metal. I use stencil, drops, uh, and different brushes. And uh, very important is the cutout metal that uh, I paint over the metal and then put them all together for the final piece to create the three-dimensional of the piece. The final stage will be the lacquer, which is very important. The lacquer uh, put out all the colors. Uh, it's a special lacquer that I put uh, on, uh, on the background and also on the, the cutout metal. Uh, so uh, thank you very much for hosting us. Sure. In your uh, kingdom. <laughs> and thank you all for listening. And we hope that we'll be able again to meet soon. Thank you and have a nice weekend. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Oh.